Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Dr. Matt Barton, and this is Matt Chat episode 538, which features a look at the game Wizardry. Now, if you're familiar with this uh, game, then you know it's one of the most important and iconic computer role-playing games of all time. Pretty much invented the dungeon crawler genre. It was the brainchild, is that a word? <laughs> uh, Robert and Andrew, uh, Andrew Greenberg, who sadly just passed away, and Robert Woodhead, who I've interviewed on the show before. And I didn't uh, plan this uh, this way, but it just so happens that today is Robert Surotek's birthday, uh, who I interviewed. Of course, he's uh, the founder of uh, Surtek. Uh, so we've got lots of connections to this game. Now, specifically, I'll be playing the uh, Digital Eclipse remake, which has uh, modern graphics, uh, some tweaks to the gameplay, the role-playing mechanics, a lot more uh, bells and whistles. I think it's a really uh, fun and fantastic project. Even if you haven't played Wizardry before, uh, I think you'd really uh, like this Digital Eclipse version. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Wizardry, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. Alright folks, oh yeah, I've been waiting to do this. I've been <laughs> just looking forward to this so much. This is a uh, the game Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. And I played the original back in the 80s on my Commodore 64. It's one of those uh, games that really got its hooks into me. And I know a lot of you guys like it. And I know it's uh, inspired just tons and tons of game designers I've had on the show, game developers. Not even just CRPGs. You know, a lot of people back in the 80s played the original game, loved it, got them into computer games. Uh, it's one of the first major uh, successful computer role-playing games. So of course, this fits right in my purview. Uh, so the question, though, is this Digital Eclipse remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, is it better than the original game? Would you be better off uh, loading up an emulator and playing this on an Apple II or maybe a, a console emulator? Uh, or is there... You know, enough improvements here where you might actually prefer this new version. Uh, I think you probably know where I stand on that, uh, but we'll get into it as we, we go here. Uh, so I'll play a little bit of this and then we'll I'll try to talk about not just this game, but role-playing games in general as we go along here, because this is one of the uh, most important role-playing games ever. A lot of the stuff that gets introduced in this game, you know, a lot of it, of course, is inspired by the Dungeons and Dragons type stuff that Andrew and Robert were playing at the time. Uh, but they also have a lot of their own innovations that they added to this. This game went on to many sequels and inspired a lot of other games. Bard's Tale, Goldbox series, you can see the influence in those. A lot of uh, Japanese role-playing games. It's huge in Japan as well as the West. Uh, well, let's go ahead and jump in here. We'll get a new game uh, started here. And at the overwrite. <laughs> my, my Matt Chat final. You know, this is such uh, It's a difficult game, in a good way, I think. It's uh, not such a big deal if you uh, create a party, a couple of your guys die, you might wipe out completely and uh, restart with a new party or add some new party members along the way. That's actually fine. It's probably typical, actually, uh, for this. So I wouldn't get too hung up on uh, trying to create the perfect party uh, you know, min-maxing stuff. It's more fun, I think, just to jump in. And if you die a few times, big deal, big whoop. You, know, you can go back in and, and play some more. Uh, but I want to touch on a few things about how Digital Eclipse wanted to kind of please both audiences, because they want to appeal, of course, to people that grew up with wizardry, love this. Uh, maybe they want a few quality of life improvements, enhancements, better graphics, 3D graphics, and all that. Uh, but they also want to appeal to people that maybe haven't played Wizardry, or only the later ones. Uh, see if they can snag some of those folks, get their support. So we'll get into how successful they were with that. Uh, one of the things that, you remember from my interview with these uh, developers, uh, they talked about was trying to give options. So if you want that hardcore, original experience, you can get a lot closer to that. Or you might, you know, like the uh, more modern feel uh, of later games. So anyway, we start off choosing between original and the console version. I think this affects mostly some of the level layouts. Uh, I never played the console version of Wizardry, so I really don't know what that's about. 
I go for the uh, original. I'm pretty sure the Commodore 64 version is closer to this original than the, uh, the console. I could be wrong about that. I don't know really how huge a difference it makes. Maybe if you just maybe if you played uh, one or the other, you want a little something different, you might switch it up. Okay, this is what I want to get into. Uh, the choices they give you, uh, de basically depending on how uh, close you want to play to the original versus uh, the modern. And you can see the stuff they changed here. The reason I want to talk about this. So one of the things when you're designing a role-playing game, uh, one of the most important things is the character creation and the character leveling. Uh, what's going to happen when you go from level one to level two? Uh, do you want how much control basically do you want to give the players over that? Or do you want to have it somewhat random? Now, a lot of us kind of control freaks. <laughs> you kind of want to uh, have a, a say in like uh, uh, the what happens when you level things get better. You probably don't want things to get worse <laughs> uh, as you level up or as your characters get older. Uh, but, you know, if you want that authentic experience, you should leave that stuff alone. But uh, I kind of like the, the changes. But it makes sense, you know, if you're thinking about characters in a dungeon. Yeah, over time, they probably get better at some things with age, but uh, you also kind of get a little creaky as you get older, so, as I can uh, well attest. Uh, another thing is the uh, the original games, you, you're rolling dice to try to get your starting attributes or your statistics, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call those, dexterity, agility, and uh, or agility, strength, vitality, and so on. Uh, or do you like this point buy system that got popular with later games? Uh, I like the point system. Now I've read a lot of stuff where people are talking about this game that have played the original to death. They love this to death, uh, or they've played both of them. And you can get into, you know, some people will say that they think you should not turn on the uh, uh, the point buy here because even though sometimes you get bad results uh, when you level up. Overall, over time, uh, it's more be uh, more good than bad. You know, same thing with a lot of these systems. So you're kind of trading off something more reliable versus uh, the, uh, I guess, chances. You're, I guess what you're missing out on is that chance that it might actually go better uh, than you'd get with the point by or the, uh, the setting points. So something to think about. Uh, aging in the game, so I think the... Yeah, aging in the original game can happen at different rates, depending on what happens. <laughs> they didn't like that concept, so they changed it up. What they call Vim. Uh, end configuration, temple design, so a lot of things that you can change. Uh, bad stuff on party wipe, disabled. <laughs> Surprise round casting, all human results, all Haman results. Uh, so this is kind of getting it. Some of the stuff that some people thought was a bug, I guess you could look at as, as a feature. Uh, but they've, I would think, improved that. I think this mostly uh, comes in late, much later in the game, especially the final fight. There's ways to basically uh, cheese that uh, final boss fight. Hide and ambush action in the medication system. Action direction, run away and turn order. I think I'll leave the hints on. Distributing extra gold enabled. So really, I don't think that they did anything with the modern that I would feel like I should turn off. Again, unless you're just going for that nostalgia, I would just go with a modern version, to be honest with you. Uh, would you like to begin the game with a starter party? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you just brand new, you just want to get in, kick the tires, see what it's all about. I, I always think it's more fun to create your own party. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll try to move at a good clip here. Now what I want to do is make... I'm going to keep it simple. And we're going to have three people in the front row that are tough enough to withstand some attacks. <laughs> so I'm going to make three fighters, basically. And then we'll think about the back row. They're less likely to get hit in the back row, but they do get hit occasionally, and of course there's stuff that will happen to them. Now let's start off with the Dwarf. I want to make a tank. I think we pick the stats first. Now a lot of this is common sense strength, you know, from other games. You want a strong 
if a guy's going to be wielding an axe or a sword, you probably want him to be strong, to get some uh, additional damage. You don't need intellect or piety. You know, this is one of the things that's kind of mysterious about this game. There's a lot of speculation about, even in the original, like, uh, some people think that the intellect might help you with certain saving throws, but it's kind of a question mark <laughs> if it's true or not. Uh, most people would say you need to have a priority system for this, so you want your strength to be good. Uh, vitality is good, of course, because that's your hit points. And the higher that vitality score is, the uh, uh, the more hit points you'll get when you level up, I believe, is the system for that. Uh, agility is important, too, because this is your uh, combat order. So you probably don't want the monsters to always be going first. So I'm just going to bump that up a little bit there. And luck, I think, is the for saving throws and probably a catch-all. Right. Uh, get our fighter, make it good. There are certain reasons to be evil in this game. Some of these other classes, the... Uh, what do they call them? The uh, prestige classes or premium classes, whatever. Uh, I think some of those. Basically, what happens, you can switch classes later in the game. I'm not going to do that. I've never gotten into that. Uh, but if that's something that interests you, you should look up the how the alignments are going to work with that. Right, let's make a dwarf. Uh, a lot of nice portraits here. <laughs> oh, he's just all the dwarves. How about this guy? I think he's got braided mustaches. Now that's when you got a serious mustache and you can braid it like this. And let's, I got my Discord folks here. So let's just make uh, this guy, Miko. That's an advantage. See, if you support Matt Chat and you're on the Discord, you might get put into a game. Right, so there's our first fighter. We made him a dwarf. Let's go with the human. Same kind of deal here. I'm not going to switch this up too much. Oh, this guy gets, uh, yeah, let's just put a couple points there into agility. Uh, you'll be able to adjust these, you'll be able to get more points for stats as we go along. Let's see, this is a Yo, man! Who do we want to make about Richard? I don't see a Richard Simmons looking character. <laughs> Uh, vaguely. And yeah, we'll call you Richard. Second one. Uh, let's see. Uh, tempted to make another dwarf. I can't. And do this again. Get some vitality. Uh, change it up a little bit. Uh, good. Fighter, good. Oh. Make this snap. I think a dwarf is a dwarf, right? Let's <laughs> see who looks like they are snappy. He looks snappy. Snap. All right, there's our three fighters. Now we're gonna go for a priest. And the gnomes it says makes good priests, so we'll go with that. Pump up piety because this is the spells they'll get when they level up. Actually, for the Macro, you probably want agility more than anything, so again, it's really nice when you can throw a spell out before the monsters get around. I don't like that nine. <laughs> you want a few, a few hit points because you can't do any damage if you are dead. Priest, good priest. This was a gnome, I think, right? Let's uh, so get punny in here. Maybe I'll make Punny the... That sounds more like a thief to me. <laughs> Who's a priest here? Maybe... Uh, there we go. Okay, this will be... Chrisius the Good Gnome Priest. Okay, there's a priest. Now we need a thief. And this guy, we're going to pump up the agility. Luck's already really high. Go ahead and stick another point in the vitality. Last night, temperatures in Alexa, stop. Confirm. And the thief can't be good because they're stealing and uh, thou shalt not steal. Something like that. Half 
halfling. Yeah, maybe I'll make this pony. Who is a pony? Yeah, I just like I like this character portrait. Go with that. And let's see, we need a priest. I mean a spellcaster make the elf. Spellcaster pump up the intellect. Vitality, a little bit of agility, a little bit of luck, I think. That looks pretty good. Oops. Mage. Good mage. Elf. And let's see who's left here. Uh, I don't know if we got Coal Slab on this one. Let's find a good mage looking elf. I like the cut of this elf's gym. Cool scab. I think that's right. Cool scab. <laughs> Can't read my own handwriting. Well, close enough. All right, got our party. Let's go in uh, to the inn, I think. That's where we're going next. Yeah, and party. Come on, guys, get in the party. Meet the collectors. Press play. Go slow. Skab. I don't know if it's Cole or Cole Slob. <laughs> anyway. Alright, and then we got 250 gold. We can make a few purchases at the store. Now, one thing I've ran into a couple times is the need for these antidotes. Because you get poisoned, and at this point, you know, that could kill you before you get back. So, if we don't quite have enough to buy it yet. I'll just have to hope we don't need it. But I like to buy some helmets. But you put helmets on these, uh, some of these troops right off the bat. And that gives you another AC pointer. Takes one away. So I guess you want a low AC. Well, that brings back some memories. <laughs> okay, return to the courtyard. And then we're good to go. So it's relatively quick to get into the maze. You've taken your first step into the fabled maze. It was only a short time ago that Overlord Trevor sent out the call, beckoning the country's adventurers to come to this place. The story as it was told was that his one-time friend and advisor, the wizard Wordna, had stolen the Overlord's prized amulet and escaped with it into the mysterious maze, a dungeon built of ma magic, chaos, and death. The Overlord promises and the rank of honor guard to any adventurer who recovers his amulet. Well, I'm proud to say I've never recovered the amulet <laughs> because this is a tough game. <laughs> but it would be a great achievement. Uh, anybody who has done that, my uh, my hat's off to you. I salute you. I just like to create adventures, get in here, see how long I can survive. And that's fun for me. I don't necessarily care if I beat the game. Yeah, it's just a fun experience, even if you're not so successful. Uh, now let's take a look at the graphics here. You can see it's a pretty big improvement over those old wireframe graphics, which you can see, by the way, I'm kind of blocking it. But in the lower right corner at all times, you can see the original Apple II dungeon, the way that it looked on the Apple II back in the 80s, as Andrew and uh, Robert put this together. So I think that's a neat little feature. I don't know if you could turn it off. I wouldn't want to turn it off. I kind of like it there. But it's a, it's a nice little reminder that we're playing a, a classic game that's been remastered. Yeah, great lighting effects, great music I've been enjoying, the sound effects. Now one of the uh, things this game is known for, of course, is establishing that dungeon crawler genre. And it does that one thing really, really well. So a lot of games try to, especially modern games, are throwing all sorts of extra stuff that came along later. You know, al alchemy systems and cooking and uh, crafting and all that stuff. Uh, forget about it. This is just about the most intense focus you can get on the pure dungeon crawl experience. This is about slowly exploring a dungeon, mapping it out, trying to survive, <laughs> rushing back. Uh, there's no uh, way to save it in the middle of the you can quit and it'll save it and you can come back but uh, there's no save scumming option so you you can't just save it here and keep reloading hoping that you'll escape 
So it really adds some tension because the deeper we go, the further we get from these stairs where I'm at now, uh, the more danger we're in. Because <laughs> I could get deep in here somewhere, get into a bad fight, uh, lose a couple characters, and not be able to get get out again. So that's it's not so tough at the beginning, but you know, as you explore deeper and deeper, that will become more and more intense. Just that question of can I make it back? <laughs> All right, so. It, pretty, it plays pretty much as you'd expect. We can use the WASD keys to move around, or we could use the arrow keys. don't think you can control it just with the mouse. So I'm just carefully stepping. Some people don't even explore until they get to like level 4 or 5. They just sit here pressing the space bar, I think, to skip a turn until a random encounter pops up. Because that's basically what we're going to do until we get powerful enough to dive a little deeper. You do not want to get deep in this dungeon at this point. <laughs> oh no! We could actually wipe on the first battle. So usually what hap what I find is when you pop into a room, it's usually when you get to an encounter. There we go. So we got five skeletons. Now I wish these were rats. They look like rats. It says kobold, but I like to think of them as rats for obvious reasons. And you can tell they are faster than me because they are just whipping my butt before I even get to move. Alright, so we're in battle. We can pull up our uh, monster card there. You can see, I don't know anything about these monsters yet. I could do the inspect enemy. I'm not going to use my fighters for that purpose, but we can try to fill some of this stuff in, learn more about our opponents. And we can also turn on the health bars. Right. Now we can't just click on an individual enemy. We can go fight, and it'll randomly select one to attack. We can parry if you're if you think your character's about to die, you can turn that on to try to stave off death. But I just want to kill these things as quick as possible. But then we get to our let's see, Grisius is our uh, I think this is our priest, right? So we could try to cast a spell here. And this is a spell slot system. These recharge when we go up and rest, but level one, I only got two spells. Here they are, I can heal or harm. So I think I'll go ahead and throw that heal spell onto Snap. It took uh, some damage there. Uh, my rogue can hide. What this does, if uh, Punny's successful, she will hide in the shadows and then pop back later and do an ambush. You might remember that from a uh, Bard's Tale series. Then we have our mage. I'll go ahead and throw some spells around. Because we're going to go right back to the top <laughs> after this battle. <laughs> Rest up. Okay, Punny did not hide successfully. There we go. Good job, Richard. Kill the kobold. Snap hits one time. There's another one dead. And another one dead. Excellent. See that 18 strength is really paying off. All right, just fight, fight, fight. I could dispel undead. Let's just try that out. I'll try to hide again. And let's put a uh, coal on inspection duty. Lock well, could not dispel. <laughs> Failed to learn anything. Boom, boom, boom. Now see, this is uh, one thing I love about this remake. They might have been tempted to put in a lot of uh, fancy spell animations and attack animations, things that would slow the game down. But since there's so much grinding in this game, you really want something to move at a rapid clip. And actually, there's a new feature that they've added recently. We can make it even faster once we get to know these enemies. But you see how quick that battle went, even though there was five of them. I'm just going to pop back up and <laughs> rest again. <laughs> Get everybody fully uh, powered, recharged, and this doesn't cost anything. Get all of them back, and we can just jump back into the maze and continue on. So this is the early game. There's going to be a lot of this. Yeah, there's Overlord Trevor talking to us. You probably noticed by now if you're not familiar with wizardry, but look at that name, Trevor. And one of the developers was named Robert. <laughs> I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> okay, 
gotta find the overlord. Or that's the overlord. He wants us to find that amulet. Remember Rogue had a quest for an amulet too, as I recall. I guess it was a fairly common uh, storyline for RPGs back in the day. Get down to that dungeon, find the amulet. You know, we were so much easier to please. You know, nobody complained about the story of this game. You know, nowadays they'd have to drag that out and have something so complicated to make George R. R. Martin look simplistic. No, just a simple quest you keep in mind. You can flush it out later if you want. Man, I just cannot stand these games these days where I can't even figure out who's who and what, what's going on. That's, uh... We only got two, so let's really try to hammer on the inspection. I'm trying to see how that works. Okay. I failed to learn anything, boo. Failed to learn anything about the slime. <laughs> oh, it's slimy! Right. Mission accomplished. It's gonna get a bit harder than this, folks. Oh, we have a chest! So, Punny! Punny wants to inspect the chest. This is uh, another important thing in the game. You uh, always have to worry about a trapped chest. And they can kill you just as surely as the monsters can. So our thief says, It's not trapped! I'm 95% sure! Yeah. Well, we can open it. Yeah, have the tough guy open it. <laughs> in case it explodes. <laughs> and we got... Five gold pieces. Wow. Okay, fill in our map a little bit there. We don't have the Duma Pick spell yet, which is the awesome mapping spell. But when we do have it, it only works if you've explored the dungeon. So you want to explore every tile for that to really fill in nicely. See, these guys are kind of. Uh... Oh, there we go. We did identify them. So we know they're orcs. Sometimes your inspection is so poor you don't even know what you're fighting. So we got orc there. Tells you how much experience. Uh, soon enough we'll even know what their resistances are and if there's any vulnerabilities. Fight, fight, fight. Go ahead. I inspect. You play it enough, you're just gonna be like. Honey fails, fails. Nico. Oh, oh man, this is going good. I'm liking my crew! I got another chest. Oh, we got an exploding box. Okay, now we need to try to disarm it. Oh, this could this could be bad. Try it. Oh, we got it. Woo! That could have been the end right there. Or at least for funny. I think an exploding box, doesn't that hurt everybody? Every open door could be your death. So that's the game telling you you probably don't want to go in there yet. Just keep on... Keep on exploring where you've been before because there's monsters wandering around here. You know, that's one of the things about wizardry. You don't see the monsters coming from a long ways off. It's just every step it rolls to see if you encountered anything. Five small humanoids! They look familiar. I don't know if these are the undead. They don't look like the undead version. No, these are just regular kobolds. So we might be able to try another spell. That's a priest. Let's try... Uh, let's try this bad air spell. So it says... Sleeping enemies are easier to hit and successful attacks do double damage. Kind of a sleep spell. Of course, in the original game, you would need the manual to be able to, to cast these spells. Part of copy protection, I guess. Man, you guys are doing great! Katino is ineffective. Uh-oh, somebody got hit. Go ahead. Fight, fight, fight! Go ahead and heal up Snap there. Ambush. Oh, we can try to ambush. Probably won't work, we can see. Funny kills Kobo. Right, so the ambush worked. Yeah, and my little Apple II screen here, you can see what this looked like uh, to begin with. So one of the cool things about this game, 
I think this was, uh, there's some Plato games. It was an early computing platform that had some uh, really early, actually MMO RPGs on it, uh, but some role playing games. And they would, I think that's where they got that idea to show you that when you fight a monster, the portrait would pop up. It's just a good chance for some artwork. You probably can see the influence this had on Bard's Tell and so many other great games. There we go. <laughs> right, fight, fight, fight. Let's get our character bar back up. So we still got some stuff to learn about these guys. Let's keep doing our inspections. You notice Cold Scott only has two hit points, so if one of these guys somehow gets back there and damages him, he is dead, so. We learned a few more details, good. So now we know their melee, we know their AC, we know their HP range, and the number of attacks. We still got a little bit to learn though. I, I just love that, it gives you a little something extra. Makes it a little bit more interesting to see if you can get these extra details. Because otherwise I'd just be parrying all the time, or maybe uh, maybe casting a... Do a little fire just to see what happens. I <laughs> fork fled. Why? Wow, fled from level ones? <laughs> wow, we are really storming this dungeon. Okay. We've got another chest. Sometimes you get items from these chests. 70 gold. Alright. Let's see. How much gold do we have? This location's unsafe. What are you doing? Let's see. Trying to see my gold inventory. Yeah, I got 29 gold. Is that all the gold I've got? Yeah, we need to get some. I don't know if that's pooled already. Let's just go back up top. I kind of want to rest up anyway, get my spells back. It's really nice when you're this close. It's not so nice much later in the game when you have a long ways to go. Okay, store, tavern. Yeah, we got a little bit more uh, gold there than I thought we had. Let's see what we can buy for 250. I don't think I got a helmet for uh, for Snap yet. No. That's probably why he keeps taking damage. Get you a helmet! Yeah, equip it. Alright, I don't think there's anything else I could buy really worth it at this point. I kind of want to start saving up for some uh, armor improvements. Also need to get some of those antidote potions as soon as possible because you do get poisoned quite often. And that, imagine you're trying to get back and you're ticking a little bit of damage every turn, every step. I'm going to be getting pretty close to our first level. We should level up here momentarily. We probably want to get to level 3 at least before we try to open that door. Go into the other part of the dungeon. Should be the here. Yeah. Fight, fight! Inspect. Ambush. Inspect. Richard. Nico. Funny. <laughs> Man, I'm making this... It, I'm just getting really lucky, folks. That's all I can tell you. I have definitely wiped a party. Just doing what I'm doing now. So our rogue there, they level up faster than everybody else. So Bunny's like, come on. Go back up. Let me level up. But I'm going to keep it going because I want everybody to level up. Not just Punny. Take another big encounter like this ought to do it. <laughs> Let's see what we got. We might be able to get a little more inspection. You probably have to be more advanced to get to these extra things there. We'll see. Snap. Oh! Grisius deduced some new insights. Wow, look at this. So now we know. Oh, here we go. Now that you have fully deduced an enemy, you can use fast combat. 
Toggle fast combat and most animations for enemies that you have deduced will be skipped. Awesome. So they're resistant to fire, looks like. Extra action to run. <laughs> I think that's what that means. Okay, so we can turn that off. Uh, toggle fast combat with right alt key. Okay, there we go. Let's try that fast combat out. That's a new option. And I guess we should just defend. Hide. And defend. Or prepare. Snap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love a game where the monsters flee! Because, huh. I mean, realistically, you see a group come in, they slaughter four out of five of your guys. Are you really going to be that last guy sticking around? <laughs> You're going to be. Woof. <laughs> Get me out of here! No trap. Okay, well, here we go. Boom, ba -da boom, boom, boom. Five gold pieces. That's each party member, I guess. So that was actually six times five, which is 30. See, I can do math. Yeah. Okay, now we should level up, because we got everybody up to level two. Don't neglect your character's agility. Don't neglect anything. All right, I'm always a little confused here because you think training grounds would be where you go to uh, level up, but I think it's actually not here. This is, let's see, Inspector Roster. So I don't think that you can train at the training ground. <laughs> uh, I think it's at the end, right? Yeah. A bit of weirdness, I don't know what's up with that. Alright, so we got the strength up to 18, so now we can work on some of this other stuff. Maybe agility. Let's kind of split the difference there. Confirm level up. Richard, level up. So we get one new attribute, only get one new attribute point for Richard. We did get six hit points. So you see what I mean about the little random element. I think it's probably a good idea to do the agility. You know, it'd be nice to knock out three monsters before they get a chance to... Oh! I need to do that. Uh, before they get a chance to attack. However... Snap is kind of low on hit points. Only got eight, so I'll put some more points in vitality. Okay, moving on. Grisius, we can see what new spells we get. Kalki and Porfik! Two new divine spell points, two tier one spell points. Excellent, excellent. So, what do we want to put? Probably a little bit of agility and some vitality. I guess it wouldn't hurt to put some strength in our priest just in case uh, somebody gets knocked out in front and he has to take over melee duty. Now here's our rogue. Let's see, agility's maxed out. Luck. A little bit luck, a little bit vitality. Level up for mage. Definitely want some more uh, vitality. <laughs> Two is just not going to cut it. So I'm tempted to go with agility, but I just <laughs> still only have four hit points. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of there. We got 250 gold. I don't still don't think we got enough to buy. Now we could buy a breastplate for somebody. So you can either buy the breastplate or you can save for the plate mail. Let's go breastplate though. And what we can do is now we have an extra set of chain mail. And unfortunately nobody can wear the chain mail. So we could just... So we need to do that for everybody. We're gradually improving our gear. Getting more spells, I'm excited. I didn't even look to see what spells my mage got. Let's see. We got that. We already had that one. Mogriff Body Iron. Temporarily hardens the caster's skin, improving their armor class for the duration of an encounter. So that's good to know. If we get into a fight with a lot of mobs, and you think that it might get an attack back there, 
And you can kick that on for a little extra security. Let's see what our new divine spells are. We've got a shield. It's just for the caster. So kind of similar, I guess, to what the mage has there. And then we've got a blessing. It proves our... This is for the whole party. So that's a really good spell. We could definitely get some use out of that. Okay, that's excellent. So we're level two already. See how long it takes. Oh, see, we already get bigger. Now we got two big groups. You might even want to flee from this. But I don't run. Okay. Let's see. Let's try out this blessings. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw a bad air. We're gonna fart on those guys. Um, oh, look at all the orcs that fell asleep. That's excellent. Good, good. good. So about half these guys are asleep, so this is this ought to go good. Let's go well, I should say. I am an English professor. For God's, for God's sake, Matt! Do we have all the... Yeah, we, are... no. we don't know their special traits. Go ahead and inspect. Uh, yeah, inspect that group. Sure. Ambush. And let's try to... Inspect. These guys. Alright. I want to learn everything so we can get to that fast combat on these guys, because we're going to be killing a lot of them. Hopefully. And we... I think these are fully uh, inspected. So we'll just defend. And defend. Good job, Richard. Good job, Miko! Yeah! I love that combat scene, too. The background's really neat. Oh, I got another chest. Uh-oh! Crossbow bolt. Oh, no, no, don't open it! <laughs> Jeez! Disarm it! Whew, come on, bunny. Oh, whew. It's always risky. I don't like that 73% chance. That's a little bit too risky. But what are you gonna do? Just leave the treasure there? Risk reward. Go oh, five undead kobolds. You know, let's let's try out the uh, dispel or the uh, turn undead or whatever, whatever they call it in this game. <laughs> oh, the monster surprised us. That's not good. They didn't hit anybody though. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't know anything about these guys. So. Let's try to spell on the priest. Put these other guys on inspection duty. Oh, holy sh... Do you see that? Wow, look at that. We took out the, almost the whole group with just that dispel. Now look at the little skeleton. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Skeleton. <laughs> Undead. You're no match for Grizzly. I uh... wonder how many times we can use that dispel. Spell undead spell. Oof. Yeah, I'm always bumping into walls. I don't think it matters. Back, back, back. Yeah. There we go. Two slimes. I can inspect these guys. Come on. Yep. Hello. Fight, fight, fight. Inspect. Inspect. Well, at least we know it's a bubbly slime. We we'll have some bubbly. Some bubbly, 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 bubbly slime. 13 gold. Yeah, bubbly slime. You don't want to see that in a dungeon, and you definitely don't want to see that on your keyboard. Okay. Uh, I'm feeling kind of gutsy. I'm almost tempted to go through that <laughs> door that Trevor's like, don't go in there yet! Come on. 
Somebody said you could just hit the space bar to advance it, but I don't think that's working. Must be some other key. This is it. There we go. Alright, bubbly slime. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, I meant to say inspect on the on punny there, but I don't know. Fail to learn. Get your kills, Nico kills slime. You slimed me. Inspect, inspect, inspect. Fail to learn, fail to learn. I wanted that to be alive to learn. <laughs> to inspect. Oh, he's dead, Jim. Ten more gold. Bunny's already to level again. Look at Bunny. Fast learner. Smart. You know, some people don't like the thieves in the. You need them for uh, disarming and inspecting uh, chest stuff. What a lot of people advise is that at some point you change the class, something else. But I'm okay. With I don't need the perfect. You know, min max party. I just like the idea of having a rogue in my group when I'm dungeon crawling. Awesome to spell and dead again. Oops. Still need to do a little inspection. I wonder what the role is for inspection. Is it intellect? Maybe luck? I should look that up. Oh, Grissius. You failed. Yeah, I guess I could just do that every time. I wondered if there might be only so many times you can dispel. Alright, how we doing? How we doing? Should be getting close to another level. Which part is remember? There we go. Everybody's Is that Grissius down there? I think we need one more. One more pack to level up to Christmas. Bah! Let me in! Bah! Bah! Ugh! An encounter. Let's see if these four kobolds are the. I want Grissius should do it. No priest there! I guess that's a good class, you know, it makes it a little tougher to level up. You know, one reason they have these different levels, or different rates of leveling up, is that you, uh... Oh, we do fast combat now. Cool. Is that, as they say, a character can die, you could replace it with a new character. So you might bring a level 1 into this group. So it's not unusual by the end of the game, or even pretty far in to have a, a mix of levels. One cobalt, please. Okay, we have enough XP for Christmas. Are you? Yeah, everybody's looking good. Looking good. You know, I feel like I'm being so productive here. Yeah. Everybody's leveling. Better and better and better gear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's what it's all about. Level up. Okay, let's see. This is my fighter. Let's do a little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> Shouldn't go so quick here. Yeah, we get one hit point. Let's bump up the agility a little bit. Okay, 16, Lysius. Ooh, we get Matu, Matu, and Montino. Two new divine spell points. Two tier two spell points. Oh, awesome. Okay, let's continue. Gotta split the difference there. Two more hit points for Punny. Good, agility's maxed out. I wish they told you what this stuff did. 
You know, you think intellect might play a role in uh, disarming stuff, but I don't know. Oh, we got Duma Pick! We've got Duma Pick! That's an awesome spell, as you will soon see and degree, It is awesome. Okay, let's uh, keep on with <laughs> the vitality. <laughs> Four is not enough. Six is not much better, but... Rest of our party. Maybe we can get in there. Oh, we need to get some stuff too. Don't we? Okay, buy an item. So let's get a uh, Richard breastplate. And let's get Snap a breastplate. Yes, breastplates. Breastplates for you. That's about all I can buy until we get to the... Wow, 750 for plate mill. That's gonna be a while. <laughs> Let's get our butts back in this maze and do some butt kicking! Wait till you see this Duma pick spell. Let's add a shift. There is... There is spells. Cast spell. Okay. So look at what Duma Pig does. Boop. Boom. Just like if you had your graph paper out. And it is kind of fun. I have played around with graph paper. It gives you an excuse to buy some graph paper. Not like you're a serious person buying graph paper. Yeah, for your geometry class, I guess. No, no, it's for wizardry. So since I explored all this, it's all filled in and shows me where I'm at on the map. Now it won't stay on, so it goes away, but it's really useful. It gives you good incentive to keep exploring. Let's see what else I get. Uh, something that gives me a little more protection. Reduces the monster's AC. Okay. Dilto. That's a dangerous word. Dilto. It's called something else. Okay, let's see what else we got. Still air. Stops air around a group of monsters. They're transmitting sound. Okay, so if we come up against some spellcasters, I need to remember how that option. Have, there's a spell I'm going to get eventually that will help me find secret doors. I don't think I've got that. Okay, well, let's go on through the the door I'm not supposed to open yet, but we're going to be super careful here. Because we will probably run into bigger packs of monsters. Yeah, we definitely don't want to go down another level. Definitely not yet. You know, I wish I could just tap. I wish it automatically opened doors instead of making me click on them. I don't know really what's the advantage of doing it that way, but... Okay, I'm trying not to get turned around. Well, this ought to be a good fight. Undead Kobolds, Trout Grisius, level 3 Dispel. Might just take them all out. Fight! Kills one. Here go, kills one. Bunny hides. Oh, five points of damage. Oh, another five points of damage. Ouch! Okay, well, I know what the priest is doing. <laughs> Heal Richard. Ambush. There we go. There we go. I think I'll cast that. Only healed up three points. So we need to do that again. Decent XP. A little bit of gold. Okay, let's get that spell cast because uh, I don't 
want to be that weak. 19, I guess that'll do. Back. Back, back. Rico balls. So not too bad. One. Kills, we could kill, stab kills. <laughs> mm. Efficient. Yeah, we got chest. So I wonder if there's always a certain percentage of doubt. What kind of makes sense? Another five gold bonus. Okay. Ooh, big room here. I feel a lot better though knowing I have that Duma Pick spell now. <laughs> so if I get two turned around, I can try to figure out how to get back. As you guys know my sense of direction is terrible. Sometimes even looking at the map, I'm still lost. Dead. Not a good. Yeah, 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 you're gonna be dead soon. Alright. Uh, I Fight. Yeah. See ya! Okay. 460. You know, sometimes you find an item. Sometimes items drop off the packs. I haven't had that experience yet. Oh, did you see that? That's a secret. Oh, yeah. Explore the room first and we'll check that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There could be some real baddies in here, though. We'll go a little bit more and then we're gonna hit our Duma pick. I want to save that Duma pick when we're about to leave because it'll fill in all the places we haven't been. Okay. Well, I'm still in pretty good shape here. Let's go. Keep on exploring. Where have I not been? There's a door over here I haven't been in. Oh, this is a big group. Alright, a little strategy this time. Let's, uh... Fight, fight, fight. Fight the front group. Let's cast a spell. See, this is why you want agility on these spellcasters, because you get this blessing in early, you can make a big difference, right? I'm going to try to dispel that back row. Right, and then we'll use the spell here, I think. Let's try Dilto. Yeah. So, Grissius got one of the undeads. Oh, that's a pretty cool effect. Scared him. I don't think the undeads run. One of the advantages of them, I suppose. Still need to inspect. Failed to learn anything. Right. Oh, we got another chest. You know, obviously, the, one of the advantages of going deeper is you get better chests, better items. Yeah, we will hear, but... Again, I'm only level 3. That's not really safe. I'm still relatively weak. Could wipe easily. That's a long hallway. Ooh, I see another secret door. Ooh, I see two secrets. Ooh. 
<laughs> that was anticlimactic. It's probably secrets within secrets. Oh, and this room is a silver statue of a boar with horns and long fangs. On the wall by the statue is a message partially obscured that appears to have been left by passing elves. It is hardly legible, but some comments warning about ghosts and demons can still be made out. Already found a silver key! Mm, I'm making progress, aren't I? Right, I'm starting to go a little nervous that we got too far. <laughs> I want to go back and recharge. At least my spell slots. Shouldn't be too far from another level up. Kill. 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 You get up and kill. Another six gold. That looks good. Oof. Now we're back in the familiar territory. Let's see if we can get a couple more for this lights here. Three cobalts. If I bend, hide. We got these guys yeah, completely filled in. Kill. Kill. Comfort gaming is what this is. At this point. <laughs> oh, he's inspected it. Okay. Ooh, 60 gold. See, funny is ready to level up again, so we should be pretty close. Let's explore a little more. And then I think once we get to level 4, I'm just going to go for that other room. That's a pretty big group, isn't it? Let's try to spell. Oh, I guess I don't have any more spell points. That's a good reason to go back to town. Still got some on our priest, but... Oh, there we go. That was weird. Alright, we got uh, one level two slot left. Uh, I don't really want to waste it. Let's just do the little fire. I lit the fire. Did five points of damage. I can't wait till I start getting the multiple attacks on my fighters. Uh oh, splinters! 74% chance. Ah, nice. Almost ready to go back up. I think we need a little bit more XP to get everybody leveled. See if we can find one, maybe two more fights all to do it. I don't want to forget to cast my Duma pick before we leave. I think it resets if you don't. Another 27 XP. It looks like Grisius. Still need to fight a couple more times, I think. Either rinse, repeat. All right, we ought to be able to dispel these guys. Fight, fight, spell, hide, and. Anyway. Uh, hmm. we'll try. I should have checked to see if they're not immune to fire. <laughs> yeah. Still up. Oh, we still need to inspect these guys some more. Inspect away. Is 
I'm trying to keep an eye on that inspection thing. I, I haven't seen it said that they learned something after they died. Oh, got another chest. Oh, exploding box. I hate those. Oh no, we failed! I guess nothing happened. That was lucky. <laughs> that was lucky! And, uh, everybody but Colscob is ready to level up. Man. Those wizards, it's hard to level up a wizard. Oof. I, don't, I probably don't need a big battle. Just a little encounter would probably be sufficient to get over that threshold. Come on, mobs. There we go. Let's see if two bubbly slimes will fit the bill. Fail to learn, fail to learn, kill, kill, fail to learn. <laughs> you don't want that to be your university motto. Free gold? Still not enough for Cole Scott. It's probably just a hair away. Five orcs ought to do it. Okay. And... Oh, sometimes I can't cast a spell. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a surprise round. Not sure what's going on. Yeah, we got these guys fully expected. Kill, kill. Alright, that should do that. Cole Scob, surely Cole Scob, that's enough. <laughs> and it is. And we'll cast our Duma Pick. Fill in more of the map here. Lovely. A little more than halfway explored, but there's all sorts of secrets in here, of course. Let's go and see what kind of goodies we get this time. Get out of there. Here we go. Just, you gotta remember not to leave before you sleep, so sometimes I sleep first. <laughs> right, let's go ahead and level up. I'll just try to remember. Okay, get some points. Yes, agility. I to start working on that. For sure. Gets a one hit point. Two attributes. And snap. Twelve hit points. That's more like it, huh? But only one attribute point. Perseus. Vitality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, some more spells, Milwa, Manifo, and some more spell points. Excellent. Rogue. Go ahead and fill out luck. Start pumping in vitality. Up. Same deal. Yeah, throw a point of luck in there, why not? Oh, I forgot to see what he got. Jeez. Okay, visit the inn. Is this where we rest? There we go. Back. And let's go to the store. Oh, now we got enough for some plate mail. Hell yeah. Oh, we don't quite have enough. But you know what I can do? I can sell the breastplate. Before I do that, though... I think, I think the priest might be able to, let's see, how do we do this? I think the priest might be able to wear that. Let's 
Let's see. Yeah, good. So we can sell this chain mail. I like a well armored priest. Or well armored. Well, that'll put us over the edge. Now we can buy a breastplate. Miko, I guess. No, I mean, what am I saying? Breastplate? <laughs> no, we're going up the plate mail. Yeah! Now we can sell this breastplate. Good, good, good. Now his AC is down to one now. So we are really doing well. This is going really well. You good, everybody? I think so. All right, now we should be able to dive a little bit deeper in. Let me check these. Let me get to the new area, then we'll check our uh, new spells out. Let's see if I got that one that helps find secrets. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Milwa follows the party, reveals secret doors. Only lasts a short while. Would rather it lasts longer, but okay. I don't see any new spells here. It's kind of crummy, but it's random. Let's go ahead and try out that. Uh, it's level one. I got five of them, so. That will help light up the secrets. Oh, sorry, get ominous. Encounter with four kobolds. We can move a little bit quicker pace now. And Man. You know what I love about this game? You really feel your characters getting stronger. That is the essence of a role-playing game. No trap map. Oh, look at all these secrets. Look at him. finds anything of interest. Okay, I don't know if it's a situation where I need to repeatedly search. Ooh, I'm getting kind of deep in this dungeon now. There's a lot of stuff on level one, even. There's some kind of secret stuff I probably won't show you. Spoilers. Sleep effect on a monster group. Why don't we try that out? Just for fun. Benifo! Okay, let's see what we can do here. I'll save his spells. Don't want to go too crazy. Uh, Benifo is ineffective, ineffective, ineffective. We got two asleep. This ought to be easy. Here on that. Took a little damage there. Fight, fight. It's kind of easier just to use the battle section. Sometimes you can just feel a secret. You just know. Oh, I think my little uh, 
Secret door finder's already expired. Yeah, sign. Corridor out of limits. Turn back. Yeah, I don't know if I'm quite ready for that corridor yet. If you haven't, if you don't see the secret door and you just hit space bar, I wonder if it would let you open it, even if you have it, even if it's not glowing. Oh, all these guys ran away before I even got to fight. That's when you know you're getting tougher. Okay. Four kobolds. I get, I'm kind of getting ready to go to the next dungeon level. You get different monsters on the different levels of the dungeon. In case you're wondering why I keep fighting the same stuff. <laughs> I kind of probably wanted to make it a little monotonous to give you an incentive to keep going. Step up that risk factor. Risk and rewards. Oh, Jesus. This is the one I hate. Poison Needle. If we get poisoned, we're going to have to make a beeline for the exit. This poison is nasty stuff. I don't. I forgot to buy any antidotes. Still looking pretty good. Explore a little bit more here. Oh, that metal tile. Now look at this. You know there's a secret here somewhere. Two bubbly slides. So I'm trying to think how I would compare this to the experience of playing the original game. I mean, this seems a... There was something I think about those old graphics. They kind of made the dungeons a little scarier, a little more dark feeling somehow. This one... I guess it's just because there's additional audio-visuals. There's... So that's the imagination. <laughs> Uh, in that old one, your imagination would fill in a lot of the details, and that may be why it seems scarier. Of course, I'm only in the first part of the match. I just remember being a kid and playing it. And just being nervous about every step I took. Like, is this going to be the, the huge fight that I can't handle? I'm pretty lucky with these small groups, but... You know, any time I could be up against a huge, you know, double group. I just roll. I'm steamrolling this at this point. There's another secret. Okay, let's see what's in this secret area. I love the secret doors. This makes it so much more interesting to explore a dungeon. You know, there's secrets everywhere. Finish slimes. Good job, good job, good job. It helps if you talk to your party. <laughs> Bunny remains hidden. Alright, how we doing? further. These battles have been... We get really lucky here. I can't tell if I've explored that area here. Let's see if I can get in there for the level. Oh, see, here's a bigger group. Now we've got eight. Hope they don't get a surprise round. Alright. Let's fight the regular core balls and I'll try to dispel that other group. Uh, 
Go ahead and throw a spell at him, too. Like darkness. Ooh. Whoa, there we go. Look at that. Oh, they got away, though. They didn't want anything to do with that. <laughs> track of what I was doing though. You know that looks like uh, this looks like a little secret area. Kind of tapping around it. Somewhere there must be a way to get in there. Of course maybe that's just what they want me to think. Yeah, I like the fast combat. That's nice. That would have been a big mistake for this game if it took forever to get through these battles. I am glad they did not succumb to that temptation. Probably a good time to go back and recharge a little bit. Oh, don't go down there. <laughs> Let's go rest up. Probably don't have nearly enough to level yet. We could check that out though. Let's go ahead and throw our spell out. Do my picket. Okay. So we will rest, come back, and maybe explore that wing over here a little bit. I wonder if I have enough gold yet to buy anything cool. 680. I think it's 750 for that plate mail. So let's just rest up and get back in there. Let's get back in there. Hidden doors, casting Milwa. Milwa. Just a couple more fights, we'll be ready to level up again. You know, I just wish there was a way to keep this mini map updated every, every time. You know, I can uh, look at my Duma pick again, but you'll notice it doesn't show me where I'm at to cast Duma pick again to see that. I think I'm in the right spot. Alright. Let me explore this chamber a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and get our Milwa spell going. I haven't been over here. That's cool. That is neat. Oh, and I already found a secret door. And I already found some bubbly slimes. Huh, Miko, you got slimed. Why did I say dispel? Did I accidentally say dispel? Oh, I think when I'm saying D, I think it means defend in my head, but it really means dispel. <laughs> I need to break out of that habit. It's P for parry. Torch is still purple. How did you come to be here? There's a present is here. All right, I'm scared. <laughs> Don't kill me now. Look at all these secrets. Look at all the secrets. A friendly group of bushwhackers. Friendly bushwhackers. Yeah, see, I knew there was something there. More secrets, wow! And more secrets. Okay, I'm not gonna keep saying that because there's, there's a lot of secrets here, wow. Okay, looks like we're this way now. Back. 
over. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm in here somewhere, right? Okay. That sure does seem like that should be one. Notice my little mill wasp bill's already gone. And we got it here. Ooh. Okay, I know where that goes. Oh, I can't get back! Oh, that's weird. Guess that was a one way secret door. Huh. Yeah, I think it might be time to just explore the rest of this. I'm starting to think we might be okay for the next level of the dungeon already. With this group. I wouldn't just say that about any group, but this group feels competent. Uh, how do I get out of here? Okay. Yeah. I am already turned around. How do I get out of here? This way? Uh oh. See what I mean? <laughs> Let me get Melwa going again. Make sure I've got enough points here. Yeah. Somehow, I'm going to go ahead and cast my um, Duma pick too. Okay, there I am. How the heck did I get here? Or better question, how do I get out of here? Looks like I got to go to the lower right corner. about this point of the game you're like did I just screw up <laughs> oh no <laughs> I think I got to go through this stuff and you can see what happens I can't see where I'm going yeah they keep they find ways to keep this keep the tension up somewhere in this level one dungeon, or the first floor of the dungeon, is a pretty bad encounter. I don't think it's the sort you just randomly wander into, but there's no way to save it, so if I accidentally end up there, it could be a white. It's a ghost. See where I'm at. Oops. <laughs> Fill in the map that way. Oh, that's a no good. That's a no good. Go that way. There we go. <sighs> I'll be glad we get back to familiar ground. I must have teleported or something. I don't know how I got in here. Oh, that is such such a good thing. I love the priest. <laughs> Chris, he is so awesome. <laughs> Alright. You know, I wonder if I'd be able to see a chest since it's dark. Oh, I got myself in a little corridor there. What waits within these Stygian halls? Ah, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, that was nerve-wracking. All right, let's get... No, don't go down. Let's get back to the temple. Rest up again. All right, here we go. I'm going to throw my spell down again, my Duma pick. So it looks like we got this little top right corner to explore left. Shouldn't be too, too hard. 
I'll go ahead and level up Punny. Wow, 10 more hit points. I'll just keep pumping it by Tally. Okay, so now I got one level 5, but everybody else is still level 4. That's alright. And we got enough money to buy yet another set of plate mail. Boom, boom. So, chain mail or breastplate. You know, I'm tempted to buy that antidote, but I think I'll just keep going because I want to get everybody in some plate mail as soon as possible. And we might start thinking about that stuff like antidotes. I think this is where I need to be. Let's see. Yeah, I think. No, I think I'm in that long. No, oh, I don't want to go there. Let's go back out. I think I'm here now. So I want to go a couple steps down and go through this door. I wish I could just keep that mill log going longer. But I happen to know there's a better spell coming that will last longer than that. I'm not too concerned about it. See another secret over there. Let's, see. Let's get that Milwa spell going again. Milwa! like that purple torch. It's a cool touch. I don't, I don't see anything here. I don't know if that spell always works though. Probably worth it to double tap anyway. Oh, that's a pretty good group. Fight! Fight. I throw a spell down too. We got some. Which one haven't I tried? I don't need that. I tried the Matu. Try. I don't want to use up my Duma pick slots. Let's do. Don't. Guess it doesn't really matter which group. I think level 5 might be where I start to get two attacks on my fighters. I'm not sure about that. But man, I'm looking forward to that. That's the game changer. more. Might have been a big enough pack there to get some a new level for everybody else. Let's see. Ten gold? Oh. Nobody else is ready to level. Another side. I feel like there's some more secrets here. I think we've explored that hallway. And now we got this one. If you play this game late enough at night, it's, you'll dream about this dungeon. <laughs> I swear. It really is good to play this late at night and dark. Maybe even with some headphones on. Hmm, these guys. Five leather clad men! It's Judas Priest! 
We don't even know what these guys are. Let's do an inspection. And inspect. Build to learn. Oh, we got rogues. Yeah, they're not too tough. I hope they don't have poison attacks or anything like that. Oh, five points. Ouch. That hurt. And we get a chest. No trap. You mean a group of rogues have a chest and it's not trapped, huh? 13 gold. Okay. Now I see some of my guys are ready to level up again, so let's do that. Back. Oh, I keep going down this wrong hallway. Hope I can get there without an encounter so I don't have to heal up again. But I will cast my Duma Pick again so we explore it a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so I've almost got it explored. There's just one more hallway here. And then we got all the secret stuff. Some more stuff there. Yeah, I love that Duma Pick. They did a good job of that. I like the way they implemented it. Right, let's do the... Go to the inn, level up. So we got vitality, strength maxed out. I guess we can start working on agility. <laughs> One hit point. I want these guys good and beefy. Good, 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 good. 500 gold. That's not enough to upgrade yet. All right, let's explore the rest of this. Then I think we could call it. Uh, I'm doing a pick here. So we need to go last doorway. Is that a secret? I don't like seeing that secret door in my, <laughs> my imagination. Let's go. I don't know if there's any reason to fight the friendlies. It doesn't seem like a neighborly thing to do. Oh, a lot of secrets here. Three undead kobolds. Even undeader. <laughs> oh. God. It's just fascinating to think these guys back in the early 80s, Robert, Andrew, coming up with this game. They probably play tested it. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Wouldn't you like to be one of those guys and come up with something this awesome? Again, they didn't have anything really to copy off of. I guess they had the. I think Robert said he played some of those Play Doh games, but this is very different than that. They had to just kind of invent the wheel, basically. So many people played this and copied off of them. Oh, oh Grisius is ready to level. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, another chest. Open the chest. I think we got enough gold to upgrade another. Uh, Another set of plate mail. All right, let me look at my. Uh... Ah! You're getting hung up in that menu. 
Oh lord, it's a big group. Oh, <laughs> thank you for fleeing. <laughs> yeah, it's def I definitely think we're too high level for this place at this point. <laughs> but hey, I'd rather just uh, take it easy. Don't get over your skis in this game, because you will die. That's cool. Snap. Now, these guys are... I killed one! There was ten things, and they ran away. Wow. Now, you better run. Gonna do a big spell here. I'm trying to figure out where we are. Yeah. Where are we actually? Find some place I haven't explored. Let me throw a doom of pick down. I'm not quite sure where I ended up here. Okay, so I'm here. There's a little more area here, but my spellcasters are ready to go. So let's get out of here and go level up. Spellcasters. That is always exciting. Maybe I'll get some awesome new spells. Good artwork. Level up. Yeah, the luck, I guess. I'm not a hundred percent sure what luck does. I think it has something to do with the saving throws. I think the agility is going to be key for my spellcasters because if I get in there and throw a really powerful spell right off the bat, that can help. That could turn the tide. Oh, oh, I think I can. Yeah, I got enough to buy the last set here. I just need to sell the. Uh, I just need to sell his. Sell his, uh... <laughs> Why doesn't he have armor? Did I forget to buy him his plate armor? What's going on here? Oh my god, so he's been running around without any armor on. Oh, that's not smart. And I can't, I don't think I got enough to buy him, so... Oh, that was a dumb mistake. I'm... Lucky I didn't get killed there. Eh, I just need to do one little quick encounter. And <laughs> then come back and buy some plate armor because he's running around naked right now. Oh, snap! Sorry, snap! Hopefully, this will do. We'll run it back and we'll get you some clothes. Just, just hang tight. You <laughs> don't die. Wow. I should have noticed he had 6 AC. It's like a barbarian. Rawr. Come at me, you don't even have armor on. Armors, wimps. That'll do it. Let's go get you some clothes. <laughs> All right. Don't fall in love with your characters. Well. Screw you, I'm not falling in love with my characters anyway, I don't care what you say. Let's buy him some armor. My god, can you believe that? Yeah, that'll make a difference. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point. Pretty much got level one explored. There is a pretty big secret here that I didn't really want to spoil anyway. Uh, so this is probably a good spot to stop, if I can. I do want to check out the kind of spells I got. Uh, ooh, look at all this prayer. That's a party. Really nice uh, AC buff party. 
We got something to cure paralysis, sleep, and hold effects. Oh, we got low Milwa now. This is a like Milwa that it lasts longer. That's a good one. All this good stuff. Nice. Let's check our mage here. <laughs> Big fire. A fireball, basically. Fire explosion amid a group of monsters. Oh, we got to try. We can't go before we try that out. Let's get back in here. Let's see. Now, I haven't. Ex Where have I not been? I think we need to go three doors down. So, oh, no, don't go in there. Two, three. And straight across. You want to shout out that fireball? I probably won't even cast it on these guys. They'll run away first. Let's see if we can do it. Fireball. This would be a stupid use of the spell. Oh! Ha! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Fireball! Boom! Boom! Now watch me. I'm going to run into a huge pack like right now. I'm going to oh, why didn't I save that fire? Man, that was awesome. Mahalito. Ooh, ooh. Back to the abyss. I can't stop playing. You got to stop. Okay, open the chest. I like to let the warrior open it just in case it is a big explosion or something. Maybe he can survive it. Always something. Let's try that spell out. The, what's it called? Malawa? Oh, no. Undead Cobalts. I hope this doesn't. I wonder if my low mill was ticking down as I'm doing this. Man, man, you just. We are just feeling really powerful. I am a god! Yeah, just keep thinking that, buddy. <laughs> just keep thinking the invincible. That's what they want to do, is that lull you into that false sense of security. Alright, so I'm going to have to stop it here. I think I don't want to go too much further than this. Because half the fun is exploring this yourself. But this gives you a pretty good taste, I think, of what the game is like. Obviously, we're just starting out. We haven't even get, gotten into the uh, level 2 of the dungeon. But if you like this, it's just going to get better from here, uh, really. It's going to be different kinds of monsters, different challenges. You have to use your tactics more. You're thinking about spells, looking for secrets, gradually getting better and better gear. Eventually you start finding better stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it's got all the stuff you love about dungeon crawlers is already here, you know, in the early 80s. And, uh, it was a great game, obviously. I don't need to sit here and defend wizardry. I mean, everybody loves it. It's got any sense. <laughs> Uh, what about just the remake? Uh, what do I think about this? Uh, the new bells and whistles. Well, I really like it. I think it's they did a good job of uh, catering to both audiences. If you played the game growing up, you want to revisit it. This is this captures enough of that original magic, I think, where you'll enjoy this. Uh, I like the, the changes they made, and you could always you could always turn it off if you if you don't like the. Uh, new options, quality of life, or whatever. Uh, the graphics look good. The music looks good. The animations are good. I like the fact that the monsters are... the battles go quick. You know, they even get quicker with the fast combat. That's, that's a nice touch. Uh, I don't really have anything to criticize about this. Uh, it's just good. I like the, I even like that they keep the uh, Apple II version going here. Uh, just in case you want to refer back to that to see the, the original. So, yeah, this is a, a really good remake, remaster. Uh, I guess you, some people might complain about the price of it, but 
actually kind of like the idea of supporting these guys. <laughs> if they give them a little extra money and they can make more games faster and better, hey, I'm happy to support that because this really kicks ass. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to stop it here. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Check it out. Wizardry Proving Grounds, The Mad Overlord. It's, it's on Steam. I'm pretty sure it's on all the other stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you like CRPGs, you should definitely play this. And ah, that's all for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Man, it was good to get back to some wizardry. Those are my roots. Good old dungeon crawl. <laughs> uh, I like the bells and whistles too, that digital eclipse version. Now, if you missed it, I did interview uh, uh, the digital eclipse team a few, few episodes back. I've also had Robert Woodhead on the show before, as well as uh, uh, Robert Sirotek, who, happy birthday, I didn't plan it this way, but it's uh, Robert Sirotek's birthday today. So happy birthday if you happen to be watching this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great stuff. Uh, you can pick this up. It's thirty-four dollars, thirty-five basically on Steam, and uh, they seem like they're still working on updates and patches and things. So definitely worth supporting. Let's so go check it out and let me know what you think. Uh, as always, I want to thank you for keeping this show alive. I mean, it's been we've been going through a really rough patch here at Mad Chat. As I was telling you last time, things were getting really, really desperate. Uh, so I'm really happy. Uh, there's some folks have stepped up to support the show. Keep us on the air. Those include Bennett, Leon, Finman, uh, Kamaxi, and Zerovac. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those names, but wow. You know, it's people like this that just have my eternal gratitude. <laughs> if you watch the show, you like this show, why don't you help us keep it going? Uh, so if you want to be just as cool as these folks, go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page. We're not trying to get rich here. We're just trying to keep the lights on. So if you got a buck... Uh, and that's all you want to do, that's all you can do, hey, don't feel bad about that. Don't think we don't need that or appreciate it because we really do sincerely appreciate everybody uh, who supports this show, uh, no matter at what level. We really think it's cool, and we, we're doing this for you. <laughs> so uh, don't hesitate. Go to that link in the show notes. Whatever you're comfortable uh, supporting the show with, even if it's just liking the videos, commenting, uh, telling somebody uh, that you think might like Match Chat about the show. Any of that stuff is great, wonderful, and we appreciate it 100%, 200%, 300%. percent And remember, you can't spell gratitude without rats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what about that news from the Matt Cave? <laughs> Oh, goodness, lots of news. Where to start? Uh, well, Miko wrote in about Greedfall 2. This is an early access on Steam, and according to some reviews, it is very early access indeed. Somebody was calling it a, a buggy mess, uh, or a buggy boring mess. So even worse than buggy mess is a buggy boring mess. <laughs> so, uh, I saw that, and I, I'm always a little skeptical of these big publications because they, they tend to want to get the clicks by trashing a game, you know. Uh, so I looked at a few other ones, and other people are a lot more forgiving. Uh, there seems to be general acknowledgement that there's some bugs, it's not polished, but then again, it's early access, so you know, that's what that's all about. Uh, but some people really like it, and they say that there's quite a bit of potential here. You shouldn't just dismiss this uh, on account of some of the, some of the problems. Uh, so I'm not really sure. I haven't had a chance to try this myself. But if you're familiar with that series or you played this early access version, do chime in. Let me know. Do you think this is something I need to explore? Maybe see if we can get some of the devs on. You know, who knows? Uh, just let me know what you think about Greedfall 2. Again, currently in early access on Steam. Uh, and then Snapper, Snappy, uh, Snap Snapper, writes in about the uh, Hannah and Joseph, who have Well Not Studios, have had them on the show before. Great people. Uh, they're doing a new project called Banquet for Fools. We have a gameplay video up about this. It's a real-time with pause isometric game. You might remember them from the Serpent in the Staglands. Okay. Uh, so explore the island of Idvimona, open world adventure, for generated companions. Uh, your companions have unique choices and dialogue with NPCs. You're assigned a pack burrow <laughs> for your mission. <laughs> a pack burrow. So is that, I guess that's not a mule or a donkey, right? <laughs> Don't know, but anyway, I like I love the uh, donkey and the Dungeon Seed series. That was one of my favorite characters. <laughs> it's about all I remember from that series. I'm ah, just kidding, but 
Now that was fun. So it sounds like they got a donkey or a pack burro. Uh, they don't have an auto compass, no quest logs. So they really expect you to, to pay attention and try to figure out where stuff is and how to do the quest using a little something called a brain. <laughs> so I guess that's fitting for a game called Banquet for Fools. But uh, anyway, I just happened to have heard from, uh, Joseph wrote in and said they'd like to come on the show to talk about this game. Uh, so I'm really thrilled uh, to get to meet them. Or I've already met them. <laughs> we did a show previous. Actually, I might meet them in person because they live here in Minnesota now. Uh, so anyway, there could be some really fun stuff coming up with them. If you got questions about Banquet for Fools or you want to just you know, ask them something else, uh, just let me know and I'll try to get those in the interview that will hopefully be happening in the not-so-distant future. Uh, once again, that is the Banquet for Fools. Thank you, Snapper. And then Tired Gaming Dad writes in about another interesting project. This one's called Pantheon. And this is an MMORPG that they're, I guess it's in some stage of development. Uh, and the idea is they're getting away from that uh, World of Warcraft model, kind of like what we were just saying with Banquet for Fools, where the, everything's kind of pointed out what to do, what to do next, kind of almost hand-holding like behavior. Uh, so they're really trying to get back to the roots of the MMORPG experience. I think one of these folks actually worked on EverQuest, uh, so if you're familiar with that one. A little bit tougher, it took uh, more coordination, I guess, with your party uh, or, with, or with your guild. They're really trying to emphasize that uh, they don't want people just being able to run through this thing uh, with no, <laughs> no hiccups, right? It's supposed to be a challenge, you're supposed to be working with other people, you know, it's the whole idea of it being uh, multiplayer. So no quest hubs, no mini maps, Instead, you get organic exploration and community interaction. So it could be a great thing, could be a bad thing, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. Pantheon, if you're playing that or you're supporting it, or maybe you're just curious about it. Do you want me to have, uh, see if I can get the devs on? <laughs> let me know what you think, and thanks again to Tired Gaming Day. All right, let's wrap it up with a quotation then. And uh, I was looking for quotes about wizards. I didn't find any quotes about, I found some quotes by wizards. <laughs> uh, but this one came up, it's a, a Yates quote, and I thought it was fun. I thought it would fit the bill. It goes something like this. The world is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. So I'll ponder on that, and I'll see you guys next time. Number five is alive.